Welcome to our video documenting the December 2018 Loyola Marymount University Yoga Therapy Educational Journey to India, guided by Professor Shauna Hughes and Dr. Lori Rubenstein Fazio. Our group of 21 faculty and students started our journey in Chennai, India. Formerly called Madras, the Chennai metropolitan area is the fourth most populous in India. It has a long history dating back to 500 BC. Some of us arrived a day early to recover from jet lag and tour some of the major sites of Chennai. Our walk along Chennai's Peacock Trail included visits to Kapalishwara Temple, a tuk-tuk ride to St. Thomas Cathedral, a tasting of South Indian delicacies, and of course, lots of shopping. The Hindu Kapalishwara Temple is dedicated to Lord Shiva and is located in the neighborhood of Mylapore, which predates the city of Chennai. The temple's gateway tower is 120 feet high and was built in 1906. The temple has numerous shrines and there are inscriptions inside the temple dating back to the 12th century. Tradition is to whisper a wish into Nandi Bull's ear for that wish to be carried onward to Lord Shiva. We then traveled by tuk-tuk to St. Thomas Cathedral, also known as St. Tom Church. The remains of St. Thomas, one of the 12 apostles of Jesus, are said to have been buried on this site. The present cathedral was completed in 1896 by the British. This is one of three cathedrals built over tombs of the original 12 apostles. The other two are St. Peter's Basilica in Rome and the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela in Spain, where the remains of St. James the Apostle are entombed. We stopped for lunch at a popular cafe and pastry shop where we enjoyed South Indian delicacies before spending the rest of the day shopping. A highlight was a visit to Nali Silk, which has thousands of beautiful saris to choose from. Our educational journey started the next day with a drive to Pondicherry, about three hours south of Chennai. We stopped along the way to support the local woman selling fresh coconut water.
The next day, we rose early and joined the many Pondicherry residents who take their morning walk enjoying the sunrise over the Bay of Bengal. The street along the beach is often closed to traffic so that residents can enjoy a traffic-free stroll along the promenade. After breakfast, we took a short drive to the Sri Kambala Swami Madam to visit with Dr. Ananda Balayogi Bhavanani, his mother, Yogacharni Manakshi Devi Bhavanani, fondly known as Amaji, and their students. At this hallowed spiritual site are the samadhis of nine gurus of the Rishi culture lineage and was home to the original Ananda Ashram. The Ananda Ashram was founded by Maharishi Swami Gitananda Giri in 1967. Swami Gitananda, known as the Lion of Pondicherry, spent his younger years studying with Swami Kanakananda Brigu in the North Indian Tantric tradition until his guru sent him to medical school in England at the young age of 16. His embodiment of the Bengali Tantric Yoga tradition of the North with the Shiva Siddhanta Yoga tradition of the South, as well as his allopathic medical degree, enabled him to develop a unique and systematic therapeutic yoga tradition called Rishi Culture Gitananda Yoga, which is now carried on by his wife Amaji and their son Dr. Ananda. One of Dr. Ananda's many talents includes Carnatic vocal music, which we enjoy during a traditional puja ceremony to bless the group for this trip. We sang bhajans and enjoyed delicious prasad, the blessed food from the ceremony. The next day, we traveled to the International Center for Yoga Education and Research, commonly known as ICYER. ICYER is located at the Ananda Ashram, which educates students in the traditional Gurukula tradition. Only after successful completion of a year-long correspondence course are students selected to live and study at the ashram for a minimum of six months. These select students immerse themselves in the yoga lifestyle with sadhana from 4.30 a.m. until 9 o'clock p.m. Understanding the integrity of such a system, we are especially grateful to be granted the opportunity to visit and study for a few days with these masters. Our sessions included Yantra and Yoga Therapeutics with Dr. Ananda, Bhajans with Dr. Ananda's wife Devasena, and Satsang with Amaji.
under the leadership of Dr. S. C. Parija, Dr. N. Anandakrishnan, Dr. Meena Ramanathan, and Dr. Ananda Bhavanani. The Center for Yoga Therapy Education and Research, also known as CITER, organized its third international yoga therapy symposium at Sri Balaji Vidyapit University on the Mahatma Gandhi Medical Center campus. 75 participants from across the world and across India were in attendance for this special event. The theme of this exciting conference was the importance of yoga therapy as an integral aspect of integrative medicine in both the West and in India. Dr. Ananda and Dr. Meena lead the CITER team at Mahatma Gandhi Medical Center, where they offer individualized and group yoga therapy to all patients with a variety of medical diagnoses and were the first to implement yoga therapy into medical and nursing school curriculum. CITER's vision is the innovative integration of traditional yoga therapy with modern medical science through a conscious focus on salutogenesis, thus enhancing holistic health and wellness. CITER offers several certificate and postgraduate degree programs in yoga therapy, and under the guidance of Dr. Ananda and Dr. Meena, they have contributed important research studies to the field of yoga therapy. During the conference, we learned about their current research projects during a session of poster presentations by the PhD students. After a delicious lunch, we attended a fun and dynamic practical session with yoga channel Dr. Meena Ramanathan and a deeply relaxing yoga nidra practical session with yoga channel professor Shana Hughes of Loyola Marymount University. The next morning, we set out for a full day trip to visit Tiruvannamalai Temple and Arunachala Mountain, considered to be the holiest sites in India dedicated to Lord Shiva. On one of our stops, we learned about the daily art ritual called Kolam. Many Indian women rise before dawn each morning to adorn the entrance of their homes with these complex designs of colored powder. This ritualistic process requires concentration focus and reminds us of the impermanence of all things as these beautiful laborious designs are meant to be walked across upon entering the home. While crossing this busy street with over 20 people may seem to be a challenge, somehow it all works smoothly and safely and is one of the many small wonders we experienced each and every day during our trip.
Tiruvannamalai Temple is located at the base of the sacred mountain Arunachala. Aruna can be translated as Yana Agni or Fire of Wisdom and Achala signifies hill. Thus, Arunachala means hill of wisdom and is revered as one of the holiest mountains in India. It is believed to be the site where Lord Shiva manifested himself and appears every year in the form of a peace-giving beacon. Each year, thousands make the pilgrimage to this holy site in order to attain liberation. Covering 24 acres, the temple is one of the largest in India and the present structure dates back to the 9th century. After spending time exploring the many shrines in the temple, we climb the trail through a small village and up the mountain to visit the meditation cave of Sri Ramana Maharishi. Along the way, we were accompanied by these curious and playful monkeys. The next morning, we rose early for a yoga class with Yoga Chamal Dayanadi of Saitar and then toured the Mahatma Gandhi Medical Center and learned about the various departments throughout the hospital that are integrating yoga therapy into their treatment plans. In the afternoon, we took a short drive to Oroville, an experimental international community founded by Mira Alfasa 50 years ago. Mira Alfasa, also known as The Mother, wrote, Oroville wants to be a universal town where men and women of all countries are able to live in peace and progressive harmony above all creeds, all politics, and all nationalities. A, B, C, D, E. At the center of Oroville lies a golden globe, the Matra Mandir, also known as the Ma Temple, which was conceived by Alfasa as a symbol of the Divine's answer to man's aspiration for perfection. In the evening, we visited ICYR's city center campus called Yoganjali Nachaliyam, 
This cultural center has educated more than 30,000 students in yoga and Vedic culture, including classical Rishi culture yoga, traditional South Indian dance Bharata Natyam, and Carnatic vocal music. We were treated to delightful performances by their students and concluded our visit with a very moving ceremony. After a free morning to relax, explore the French Quarter of Pondicherry, or contemplate the experiences of the week, our group returned to Chennai for a flight northwest to Pune and transferred to the Western Ghats of Lanavala in preparation for our visit to Kaivalyadam. Founded in 1924 by Swami Kuvalyananda, Kaivalyadam was the first yoga therapy research center in India, created with an aim of bridging traditional yoga with modern science. Covering 170 acres, it is now home to a college and primary school, a health center, asana halls, Ayurveda and naturopathy facilities, as well as philosophical and scientific research departments. This campus is unique in that it accesses renewable energy through its solar plant and windmills, grows organic food and medicinal herbs, and is home to over 40 cows that provide milk to the residents and patients. Mahatma Gandhi and Indira Gandhi were some of the notable students who studied yoga here with Swami Kuvalyananda. Kaivalyadam offers multiple certificate courses in classical yoga, Ayurveda, and yoga philosophy, and hosts many workshops, online courses, and conferences. Walking the beautiful grounds of the campus nurtures with a sense of peace and well-being and reminds us to slow down and relax. Our sessions took place within the peaceful Manan Meditation Pod and were initiated with a puja led by Subo Tuari, the CEO and son of Kaivalyadam's director, Sri Opi Tuariji. Our sessions in classical yoga included asana, pranayama, and meditation where we refined our practice under the guidance of expert instructors. We were especially grateful for the interactive classes in therapeutic yoga philosophy led by Vedic scholar Dr. Ganesh Rao.
Every aspect of our visit was magical and brilliantly organized and managed by Shalini Srivastava. Kaivalya Dam Library houses hundreds of yogic manuscripts. A team of researchers from their library led us in a lively discussion about the process of translating these ancient texts. Professor Bogol led us on a tour of the scientific research lab where they study the physiological effects of yoga practices. Our tour of the campus included a walk through the gardens to visit the cow shed where this special cow was about to give birth. We were extremely honored to have the opportunity to study pranayama with the renowned Sri Opi Tiwari, a direct disciple of Swami Kuvalyananda. One afternoon, we enjoyed a scenic hike to visit Swamiji's meditation cave and enjoyed the beautiful vistas from this sacred site. Before setting off for Mumbai, we stopped to tour the Karla Caves. These rock-cut Buddhist caves were developed between the 2nd century BC and the 5th century AD. The ascent up the mountain to the cave is lined with shops selling prasad and sweets. Many devotees visit this site with elaborate offerings for ceremonies such as baby namings and weddings. Remember 
Buddhists tended to locate their monastic establishments in natural geographic formations close to major trade routes so as to provide lodging houses for traveling traders. Inscriptions from these traders can still be found on the giant pillars within the caves. The largest and most completely preserved hall of this historical period is called the Grand Chaicha and is home to many intact sculptures as well as a decorative teak ceiling. After touring the caves, we drove to Mumbai to see some of the famous sites including the Victorian train station and the Gate of India. Some participants stayed additional nights in Mumbai while others participated in optional extensions to Delhi and Agra to visit the Taj Mahal or Kerala to enjoy Ayurvedic treatments prior to heading home. <laughs> 